I'm Alex Grieve, better known as Ivy Crazy, and this is day two of testing the Hobby Wireless 3.3 gigahertz Iron Horse video system. As you can see today, I remembered my airplane, and we're gonna be testing in the same location the same way. We're gonna see if we can truly get eight aircraft in the air, or if we're limited to four or less on the 3.3 gigahertz Iron Horse. We're gonna do some full power testing in polarization, out of polarization, and then we're gonna lower the power and try it again and see if the results are any better. So with that, let's do a little flying. Sit. Okay, ready? Okay. Okay. Transmitting channel four. Make sure that is channel four. Transmitting on channel four. Interfering. Adjacent channel, channel three, same polarization. In this test, I'm simply establishing a baseline. And as you can see, well, Power I don't down. get very far. As you can see here on the map, I only made it about 50 meters before the video went completely out. So now we'll move up one channel on the transmitter. As you can see, the video is actually working here, but I wouldn't call it good. Not halfway out, I'm getting a lot of video interference. Sure, I can fly, but it's not very enjoyable. So I'm just gonna push it until it completely Ready, drops out. Down. Still going, still going. Power down. All Here's right. a map of that flight. As you can see, I made it further, but got interference at relatively close range. So now it's time to test my theory and see if a lower transmit power would actually be beneficial. Okay. 20 dB worth of attenuation, left hand on the airplane, left hand on the receiver, and left hand on the interfering transmitter. I'm on channel five, interference is on channel three. Let's see what it looks like. Here we are transmitting and interfering at only 10 milliwatt. As you can see here, the video is a lot cleaner despite having the exact same polarization as in the last test. It appears the 20 dB attenuation is actually helping a lot more than reversing polarization. From the map here, you can see I made it just a little bit further. However, you can also see that the interference came a lot later. Now time to reverse polarizations and see what that does. Okay, so two channels down with the same polarization and 20 dB worth of attenuation, I was able to make it almost to the tree line, which is about a quarter of a mile away. So we changed the polarization to right-hand circular polarization on the interfering transmitter. Still, channel five airplane, channel five receiver, channel three interference, just interference is right-hand circular. Let's see if this makes any improvement. <laughs> At this point, I'm noticing how much cleaner my video feed is. I haven't got any interference yet, and I'm almost at the crossroads, which is where the other one started to interfere. Then I get my first blip of interference right at the tree line. However, the video seems to be pretty good, so I keep going. It's at this point, however, that I start to question myself on whether the interfering transmitter is actually on. Still powered up? Yep. Wow. I'm really out there this time. I don't know if I'm gonna quite make it to the road, but I'm out there. At this point, I'm very nervous. I've made it out a lot further than I expected. I'm over a half mile out and I'm only transmitting at 10 milliwatt. And then comes the brown pants moment. All right, I'm gonna bail here. I'm, I'm way out there. So I gotta bail and turn around and come back. Uh-oh, come back. I'm so nervous that I completely forgot to tell Lindsay to turn off the interfering transmitter so I could see to come back. No. Yeah, power, are you powered down? I'm powered up. Power down, power down, power down. Woo. Woo. Wow. You never said power down, so. Yeah, I just realized that. <laughs> Probably should have said that. Oh, pucker factor, pucker factor, pucker factor. 
Ah. This is a map of that flight. As you can see, I made it a lot further out when reversing polarization as I did with the same polarization. However, I made it back to the tree line before the interference went away, and then I remembered to tell my girlfriend to power down the transmitter. So I think we should call this 350 meters. Okay, so after the last test, you can see that attenuating the signal really helped things a lot. Although, when I turned around, I probably should have remembered to tell my girlfriend to power down the transmitter. Oh, man. So, in this test, I am now three channels over. I am transmitting on channel six now, on the left hand, and the interference is still on channel three, running right hand. This one at full power. So, this will determine whether or not we can get three aircraft in the air at full power. So, with that, Lindsay, power it up. Power it up. Here I'm flying again at full power, but this time the interference is three channels away from my transmitting channel. And as you can see, the video is a lot cleaner than it has ever been to this point. However, my nerves are still just about shot from nearly losing my airplane on the last test because, well, I don't have an autopilot of any type, and I probably should for this kind of thing. Admittedly, I could have gone further. I told right, her to power, power down. down when I was seeing multipathing and not interference. But seeing as I made it to the far end of the tree line, I think this is sufficient to say that three can be flown in the air at the same time. So, after testing the Iron Horse system, it looks like you can only get three pilots in the air at the same time on the system. Now, in the future, I bet we'll see lower power transmitters around the 200, 250, and 500 milliwatt. And with that, we're likely to get four or more in the air. But to get eight aircraft in the air, we're going to need a slightly better receiver. Overall, I really like the Iron Horse system. I mean, it's a brand new band, and that's three more pilots in the air that we previously didn't have. Performance? I think it's pretty good. It's much better than 5.8 gigahertz as far as multi-pathing and object penetration, but it's not quite as good as 1.3. But then again, the antenna size is really nice. And one other thing, that transmitter for a 1 watt stays amazingly cool for its compact size and its weight. So overall, I think it's a pretty high quality system. I might be crazy and keep them flying.